2019, upon the recognition of Councilors Lisa F. Klein, William H. Dwight, and Jean Lee Shara, 19176, an ordinance prohibiting the use of face surveillance systems be ordained by the City Council of the City of Northampton and City Council Assembly as follows. That the ordinances of the city are hereby amended by inserting as uh, Chapter 290, Section 1, the following ordinance titled Prohibition on the Use of Face Recognition Systems by Municipal Agencies, Officers, and Employees. Section 1, Definitions. For the purpose of the section, a, face surveillance <clears throat> refers to an automated or semi-automated process that assists in identifying an individual by capturing information about an individual based on the physical characteristics of an individual's face. B, face surveillance system is any computer software or application or other technology that performs face surveillance. Uh, C, city officials shall include all officials and employees of the city, whether elected or appointed. Section 2, prohibition, it shall be unlawful for any city official to expend any city resources to obtain, retain, access, or use any face surveillance system. Uh, section three, miscellaneous. A, three years from the month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the city council for such amendments as councilors may propose and the council may adopt. B, nothing in this chapter uh, shall be construed to limit uh, any individual's rights under state or federal law. C, the provisions of this ordinance shall be effective immediately upon passage. Uh, motion to approve this, please. So moved. Second. Councilor. Klein. Klein Okay, so um, discussion. Yeah. Councilor Dwight. Um, this what. Uh, as you heard in uh, uh, council, uh, <laughs> Councillor spelled differently, uh, Newman's uh, presentation, but also as you heard from the public as well, we have, um, well, historically, our technology has far outstripped our policies and laws providing protections as that technology advances. Um, are in this instance a facial recognition technology which we've experienced but for instance for me in order to get on my phone my phone looks at me and says you're okay the you if you're on facebook you can see that it will automatically start tagging people based on facial recognition characteristics you also note that it fails about a third of the time <clears throat> there are no policies currently providing protections or oversight of this of this technology that's moving rapidly and changing rapidly. Uh, the article, I think one of the articles that um, Bill Newman was referring to was the New York Times just did a rather extensive report on how Chinese, the Chinese government is using mm -hmm. uh, uh, facial recognition technology and AI basically to monitor every aspect of their citizens' lives. Now, one would hope that that's not something that would play out here, although uh, private businesses, of course, are doing that with the intent of trying to sell you something or sell you as a commodity. But in this case, we're concerned particularly about the fact that these instruments can be used to limit, restrict the freedom and liberties that we, we, we are, we're sworn to protect. That's our job. That's what the oath that we take. And um, the sponsors have been concerned about this before we even, dis I think, discussed this in concert about what do we do about this <coughs> and, and, and in conversations with Bill Nguyen and other members of the ACLU. This uh, proposal was originally much longer and, and probably more prohibitive. Um, uh, we ran up against the, you know, the debate that we've heard ongoing uh, as ever since the establishment of the new charter about what, to what extent do we have the authority to provide directives for uh, employees of the city. Um, in this case, this has been pared down substantially, but the fact that the effect is hopefully the same. And that is prohibiting the resources, which we do govern, which we do have the authority over, uh, being applied towards using this software. Um, there's a three-year window on this, a, a, a three-year revisit, basically, a redo opportunity uh, for a future council 
to um, discuss as the technology and possibly, hopefully, the state law and federal laws start to catch up with the technology as it exists. But this is the stopgap that, this is the, a minimal stopgap. Um, and it's it almost, it has a little more weight than an actual resolution, but the resolution would, would probably scream louder, at least one that I propose, that would just say that the employment of facial recognition software, um, while it could prove in some instances to be a valuable tool, in some cases for law enforcement, mm -hmm. the potential harm that's available, in my mind, trumps that, and pardon the use of that term but so we offer this at this late stage at this 11th hour uh, in the hopes that uh, the council will agree that it, there needs to be and, and by the way I should emphasize we had long conversations with the mayor and the chief of police uh, there is no uh, face facial recognition software currently being employed by the city um, notwithstanding the fact that there is possibly a desire at some point to use it. Um, they were very, I mean, it was, I, was, I was grateful for their conversations and it was in the hopes that w those conversations we would come up with something that there seemed to be mutual agreement on. And I think that is this and, and we shall find out during the uh, course of the conversation, but I do hope that uh, my colleagues will join me uh, in supporting this and hopefully, and in fact, I would even request two readings for mm -hmm. obvious reasons because I would like you all to have the opportunity who have also weathered the debates around security cameras and other things, basically knowing the, the thrust of the debate and the discussion and what compels us to, to present this to you today. I would, I would appreciate having the opportunity to know your assent or dissent before we close out our session. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Other comments? Councilor Sherry. Um, as we heard from Mr. Newman and Councilor Dwight and, and others this evening, the error rate um, for this kind of software is too high and it's discriminatingly so. The, there isn't um, a margin of error that's applied equally across the entire population. So. Um, and also, as Councilor Dwight was just saying, this technology is moving incredibly fast, for better and for worse. It's improving and becoming more accurate, um, but the scope of it is also expanding. Um, and at this, in this time of very rapidly changing technology, sometimes these sticky, hard ethical debates and the protections that Councilor Dwight was just talking about, um, they can't keep pace with that technological change. And just because we can do something doesn't mean that we should do something. And uh, history is really riddled with the bones of those horrible ethical mistakes. Um, so this is really just asking that we as a city impose our own breaks so that we can be really thoughtful um, about the implementation of these new tools. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The other sponsor perhaps speak to it or any other member of the council? No? Councilor Bidwell. Um, yes, I'd, 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 I'd very much like to speak to this. Um, this makes perfect sense to me. I'm very much persuaded by the, the information that is out there about the unreliability uh, problems with this technology. Uh, and I agree with, with Councilor Dwight that in something like this, you need to look at the probability of harm versus probability of benefit, and in this case, uh, given the developing state of the technology and the lack of other regulatory regimes, uh, I think the, the potential for harm far outweighs what we understand to be the potential for benefit. But what I also appreciate about this is the fact that uh, it builds in uh, a look in three years so that those of you who will be on the council three years from now, and including those in the audience, uh, we'll have an opportunity to, to look then at what will no doubt be a very different uh, state of the technology and hopefully a different state of uh, uh, the ability to build in safeguards, but we just don't know that now. But I would, I would hope it, that in three years there would be an open-mindedness to again take a fresh look at that 
the benefits of and the uh, benefits of, of use of the technology and uh, and the potential harm of the technology. The calculus could be very different then, but right now it's clearly on the side of uh, 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 not permitting this technology for use in, in our city at this time. Thank you. Um, Councilor Nash hasn't spoken. Would you yield to him? Sure. Councilor Nash. Yeah, I want to voice my support for this and for in uh, from the perspective of the pleasure of being anonymous. You know, that there is, you know, right now we are here, we're being recorded, but we're serving as public figures. And there's times where, you know, you're walking down the street and it's so nice that, you know, nobody's looking at you or taking you in or maybe you bump into a neighbor and they're recognizing you because they're using traditional facial re recognition stuff by using their eyes, you know, that, um, that the, that it's, that it's really wonderful to have places where we aren't subject to being recognized. And um, so that's why I'm supporting this. Thank you. Councilor Dwight. I, I just wanted to say that actually I, I meant to mention that in the course of the discussion of legislative matters, Councilor Murphy brought up a very good point. So what scares you more, the fact that this doesn't work or the fact that it will work? And that was very telling, right. and he was right. The fact that it will work in many cases depends on who's interpreting what working is, as, as, as Councilor Newman said in their quotes. And he described, and I don't want to speak for you, but I understand your reticence to speak. Not speak well. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's was, he was more terrified of the prospect of it working. And that caused him concern, and that prompted me a, a different way of even looking at this. The, the fact that it, it, if it actually and that's what they're doing in China right now, in leaps and bounds, they're developing a biometric reservoir of information that is becoming more and more and more precise. Um, they tend to be more culturally homogenous, so they prop their error rate might not be as great as ours, but the fact is that when it does work, that literally is dominance, control, and oversight of individuals who would probably, at least in this country, and hopefully in this community, believe that that's a, something they don't want to concede or give over to a government. So that's the bigger issue, ultimately. Thank you. Council the Barge. Yes, um, I'm supporting this 100%, just like I did with the surveillance cameras. And I think in, in due respect, the language on here I'm very very pleased with plus I'm very happy to hear which I knew this had occurred that um, Chief Jody Casper didn't have a problem with this or did she I, I, I don't want to speak for the chief in that respect I've never heard uh, whether she signed off on this or not and the mayor may have a better sense of that but I don't want I didn't want okay. to project that uh, Chief Casper um, is in agreement with this is it's just that she definitely participated and was helpful in, in, in developing this. With the language with it, yes. you mean? Okay. So we, so we took into consideration um, many of her co expressed concerns, but I don't think we met all of them. Okay. But I just want to be clear on that. Okay. All right. But anyways, I'm happy that she at least was partly involved with it, and I'm happy with the language, and I will support this. Any other comments? Um, if I may, I'd like to just suggest some technical amendments, um, which I think help the ordinance accomplish what it's, I think, meant to do. They're all in section three. I'll just describe <coughs> them informally first, if I may. First section, 3A. Um, this says, three years from the month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the city council for such amendments as councilors may propose and the council, council <coughs> may adopt. Um, the issue with this is that it's phrased in a somewhat unusual way because, of course, an amendment, so an ordinance is, we mean it to mean either the code book, the ordinances that have been passed into law, and it's, it's like Wikipedia, we edit it from time to time, and then we have an ordinance like tonight, which is an ordinance which would 
amend the code book. And so we kind of mix up those, those terms, perhaps. Um, we can't just put amendments to an ordinance on a future agenda. That would have to be an ordinance that goes through the process like this one has. So it's somewhat problematic to say that in, in a date somewhat certain we're going to consider amendments. So I think the sense of it is you just want it to be reviewed by the council around that time. So I would suggest that the word such amendments as councilors may propose and the council may adopt uh, be deleted and simply we, we substitute the word review such that it read, three years from the month of enactment of this ordinance, this ordinance shall be placed on the agenda of the city council for review. That's kind of the first one. Let me do them all together because otherwise I have to write down who first and seconds all these. <laughs> uh, B, nothing in this chapter, nothing in this section, better, not chapter. Section is this, this area. Um, unless, no, no, no. Is this an entirely new chapter of the code? Where does this fall in the code book? That was, that was amended by inserting as chapter 290, yeah. section 1. So I think you're correct in so, saying that it's. Okay. Um, so there is no chapter 290 section. at all. Is that, is that right? Okay. As chapter 290, yes. So that doesn't exist. All right, so never mind that one. Uh, chapter is fine. Uh, but C, I'm going to bring in conformance with A. Uh, the provisions of this ordinance shall be effective immediately not upon passage, but rather upon enactment. Because either the mayor is to sign it or it's otherwise become law before it's effective. Those are just technical amendments, um, which I will offer formally now. I will move those amendments. Okay. Second. Okay. Um, just point of process, if you're yes. amending, it seems like you have made the motion and- Right, I would second that. Right, so. Just so that we know. Okay. So, right. so you're correct. I think I did make that. And so Bill Dwight seconds it. Council Dwight seconds it. I said Bill Dwight I'm putting people's initials down. <laughs> um, any discussion on those amendments? Any questions? Everyone understand the amendment? Okay. Can we come with a voice vote? If there's no discussion, all those in favor of adopting the amendments, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? So those are approved. Any further discussion on this? Um, I was express my appreciation for the work that's gone into this. I, I read the other day, um, it, was a, it was in the Wall Street Journal, which I do not regularly read. Um, when I'm out in the golf course lighting my cigar with money. <laughs> <laughs> Reading the journal like I do, you know, you know, I was researching this and it came up, uh, it was a report, you know, not from, uh, an, from an industry research group. I assume they researched this and maybe other things uh, about surveillance as a technology. Mm -hmm. And um, it appears that, according to this report, that by 2021, the estimate is there will be one billion, with a B, billion surveillance devices, whether they're all cameras or whatever, in the world, one billion. So that's interesting. What's the population of the world at that time? Well, that's actually the time when the world uh, will have an eight billion population. So in, in a year, there will be some surveillance device for one out of every eight people in the world. And those are clearly not distributed uniformly. But what I think is very clear is that, actually, where population is projected to level off, this is a technology that proceeds very quickly. Um, and I think it is, as others have noted, it's, it's, the technology is, is, is outpacing by a lot uh, the regulation. It's almost entirely <coughs> unregulated. Uh, so I think, in some ways, I don't want to lose us votes, but this is a very conservative proposal. This is, let's, let's be cautious, and it, it does show some leadership and I hope the Commonwealth uh, follows suit um, and, and looks at something like Northampton is considering here tonight uh, for the state. So, all right, any other discussion? Okay, here no other discussion. So we're ready for a roll call. Roll call, please, okay. Um, uh, Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Councilor Klein. Yes. Councilor Labarge. Yes. Councilor Murray. Yes. Councilor Nash. Yes. Councilor O'Donnell. Yes. Councilor Shara. Yes. Councilor Bidwell. Yes. Okay, that is approved. Move to suspend, suspend the rules, rule. please. All right. So I take it Councilor Dwight has yep. made a motion to suspend the rules. Second. I did. Councilor I did already. She beat you to it. <laughs> already writing the initials. <laughs> right, so the motion is to suspend rules to allow for two readings in one night. 
Uh, is there any discussion <coughs> on this motion? No discussion? Um, point of information, the, the rules provide for automatic rollover of ordinances. So any ordinance that is not approved tonight goes over to the new city council because there are members who are sponsoring it who will be a member of the new city council as well as this one. So if, if we do not suspend the rules, the next council votes on it whenever the new council president schedules it for a vote, um, presumably early in the next session. And it would be just as uh, a valid vote on second reading at that time as it would be tonight, just so councilors understand. Um, and so having said that, I mean, I, I have to say as a, a strong supporter of this ordinance, I, I think I have to be consistent with what my position has been really the, my whole time as council president, and I hope largely consistent in the council. And unless there is a, a strong reason to, to suspend the rules, I'm really not in favor of doing that. Uh, and it's totally a legitimate thing to do. It's not wrong. It's up to the, the preference of the council. Uh, but. You know, I mean, the last time we had this debate, I mean, people talked about how, <laughs> I mean, people cited the need for um, a uh, careful process. And I think this process has been careful and there's been lots of discussion, but um, I think out of an abundance of, of caution and to be consistent with my position, I, I'm not in favor of having two readings tonight because really I don't see any cause to do so. Any comments on that? So I saw Councilor Dwight's finger go up and then Well, I'll, I'll defer to Councilor Bidwell and Klein that and then I'll... Wait, okay, okay. Councilor yeah. Bidwell. Um, I have the, I share the same reservation as, as, as the Council President. Um, we, we all seem here to be in, 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 in agreement, clearly. We've just voted all, all supportive, but I do think it's an important matter and worthy of uh, uh, the deliberation that would take place uh, at, a, at a second vote. And I think it would be, well, as, as an outgoing counselor, my, my instinct is this is creating the law of the city. Um, it won't be, or could be reviewed at any time, but it's built in to be reviewed in three years. Why wouldn't uh, we want the, the, the next council to, to have a chance to, to ponder this and, and to vote on it? Uh, I had thought of suggesting just de deferring the whole thing to the next council for that reason. But the compromise is we take one vote, but then the new council has their bite at the apple. So I guess I uh, would uh, uh, vote uh, uh, against the uh, waiving of rules to allow a second reading tonight. Any other discussion? And Councilor Nassar, do you seek recognition? Oh, so Council Councilor Klein, Klein, and then we'll go to Councilor Dwight. Um, I appreciate the concern. I have shared that concern when we um, waive rules and uh, take two votes. I think it's a really uh, well thought out process to give people space and time to do more research, ask questions, to come back and, and do a second vote. Um, this is a, a piece of legislation that I worked closely on and, um, and I'm really gratified to hear the support by and large, um, I mean, we had a, a unanimous vote here. And um, I, I think in this case, it's okay if we mm -hmm. go ahead and we take two votes. I would love to leave the council. I mean, I'm not saying this, mm -hmm. uh, you, you don't have to do it to give me a gift, but um, I would <laughs> love as I'm exiting the council to be able to say that this is a, a piece of legislation that I saw from start to finish. Um, pass. I have no doubt that incoming colleagues would um, vote positively on this so that I know that it will, it will um, you know, come to the same resolution ultimately. But um, I think as a symbolic gesture, it would be lovely if we can part from the council, the five of us who are leaving, having made a vote and made mm -hmm. this contribution to the city, this very important piece of legislation um, that I think we, we need to see pass. So um, I respectfully and with great understanding of why you're both hesitant, the two that have spoken so far, um, would vote to um, waive rules and, uh, and have two votes on this. Thank you. Yeah, and great respect for that position as well, of course. So Councilor Dwight. So of course, uh, the two reading 
phenomenon is unique to this body, actually. Not most the, there are other mechanisms. It's basically a result of a misinterpretation. I don't mean to relitigate this, but the fact is the reason we had to. The, it is understood the first reading is when the ordinance is introduced. That's the first reading. And the second reading comes with the vote. Um, we do it differently. We've done it differently. No one really knows why or how. And <laughs> when we discussed in the rules, it was for the reason that Council O'Donnell referred that it was, and what you just alluded to, which was the opportunity to <clears throat> digest it, if you will, and to have the public an opportunity to give the public an opportunity to digest it. Um, in, in that respect, that would be the only reason at this point that I would that I would defer to that um, to provide the public an opportunity uh, to weigh in. So I mean, it, the part of the difficulty here is, as I said, this is, comes at the eleventh hour, <coughs> hasn't really gotten vetted in the newspaper, hasn't been discussed it on the street, has not been. Uh, we, Counselors have not heard feedback. I've, other than people who have helped us develop this, I haven't heard anything from uh, community members. Sure. But what compels me to ask for the second reading and to complete it tonight is for the reason I stated before was that um, all of my colleagues, all of you, have already participated in similar conversations about similar issues. Um, and there is an investment that I think translates to a, a, a knowledgeable and informed vote tonight that, that not to say that the folks coming in would be less informed but there's a certain investment that you all have engaged in that I would like to see honored that's all and, and respected and and if you will a, a parting gift as well for Councilor Klein not the best reason to make law <laughs> is that's right but still at the same time we have had two readings on financial orders that are significant mm -hmm. that the urgency comes because of certain deadlines that come that are out of our control. This deadline here came upon us somewhat out of our control. Um, but there is no urgent deadline to have this put in place because, as I said, there's the police chief has no intention of currently investing in this software. So I will leave it to your conscience. I just. Uh, I just argued both sides. So. <laughs> I was going to say, I, we'll I agree see with I, you, but see I don't if know I win. What, what side. <laughs> uh, would the council from Ward 2 defer to the council from Ward 4? Was not spoken. Um, in addition to the extensive conversations that the three sponsors had and the conversations we had with the mayor and with the chief, um, I'll also note that this had a very robust conversation in legislative matters, and three of those four counselors are. Um, are departing so it, it feels almost a little bit unfair to me that sort of the the main discussion um, or one of the main discussions that was had um, perhaps the new counselors wouldn't have been um, privy to or, or had the experience of so um, I feel like that's sort of another reason why it feels like this for me it feels like this body should complete this one. Um, I, 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 I respect the desire of Councillor Dwight to somehow allow some coming of full circle and some some connection between previous discussions on a what I would argue is a totally different totally different ordinance on a totally different matter. So I don't really see any any, any need to round things out in that in that way. This is its own important matter that, as far as I'm concerned, is unrelated to any previous ordinances that we've we've debated. There isn't a sense of urgency. Um, and I think it's a very telling point that uh, if we regard this as an important ordinance, and we've all said it, it does, that there has been very, very little public attention to this. And I think it's, it's, it's deserving of, of more public attention, more opportunity for, for public input. So I'm, 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 I'm even more convinced as I think about it that I would like to see uh, a second vote uh, deferred to the new council. Oh, Councilor Nash. So uh, I, I'm in favor of doing two readings tonight. Um, that my sense is that this has been discussed and vetted. Um, it has been in the newspaper. It was, you know, and that, um, and I think 
you know, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, the feedback that we've gotten tonight and um, I'm comfortable with us moving forward with it. Thank you, Councillor. Other, uh, Councillor Klein. Um, one uh, slight imperative here too is that the ACLU of Massachusetts, and I was remiss in not um, actually thanking Bill Newman, Attorney Newman, who is here, who really kind of shepherded this process and brought us to, uh, to this, re this, uh, this ordinance, um, is, is really conducting a campaign across Massachusetts. There is a bill in the State House. Um, we're trying by the end of 2019 to have as many cities and towns in Massachusetts um, pass ordinances along these lines so that we can really give a push to, at the state level, um, to creating a statewide ordinance. And um, we would be joining Cambridge and Brookline who are, I'm not sure if they've passed them yet or they're exactly in the same place that we are in trying to pass similar ordinances. Um, there are other towns and cities that are working on this, but we're trying to have as much um, kind of uh, ferment around this as possible uh, by the end of 2019. So it's another uh, reason that I think it's important for us as a leader in these kinds of issues in Northampton to uh, consider passing this tonight in two readings. Other discussion on this question of suspension of rules? No other discussion? Uh, roll call probably. Yep, gee, thanks. Well, <laughs> I'm calling for roll call. How's that? <laughs> well, you have that right. No, <laughs> it actually is clearer. Um, so, yes, on the floor, made and seconded. And now we're going to start with Councillor Dwight. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Hold on a second. <laughs> Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell. No. Councillor Shara. Yes. Councillor Bidwell. No. Bidwell, no. Councillor Carney. Yes. Councillor Carney, yes. So by a vote of 7 to 2, the rules are suspended. Move uh, second reading. Second. Okay. Councillor Dwight moves. Positive uh, uh, approval on second reading. Councillor Carney seconds it. Um, discussion on second reading, please. Um, I think um, just as, as a note for the future, one thing that might be interesting in, in at the three-year mark before is one's face is really one aspect of a broader subject. It's not really just about faces. It's about biometric data, generally, indicators. And um, originally I was going to make a suggestion for changes, but I'm, I'm just going to um, hold off um, because I'm satisfied with the a great amount of thought that has gone into this uh, uh, on the part of sponsors and um, working departments and so on. But just for the, just for the record, I think it might be when this is review, uh, revisited by the City Council. Um, again, it's, this is proceeding so quickly. It's not just your face, it's your gait and how you walk. It's genetic information, lots of other stuff. and. Um, I think this isn't the kind of thing that you need to future-proof. And so um, actually it's nice that there's a review clause in here. I think that's helpful. So anyway, uh, any other discussion on this? Second reading? Oh, Council Speedwell. Just, just a, a procedural question. Sure. And this would be a, a, a Laura question probably. Just what is the mechanism by which we satisfy ourselves that three years from now this will appear on an agenda? What, what, what's, what's, what's the three-year tickler system we have in place? Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, I'll do my, my best answer if I may. I mean, uh, so for example, in the charter, we all know there's a 10-year review of the city charter. And that's big enough where we sort of remember it. What we almost forgot some time ago was the five-year re review requirement for the Code of Ordinances. I remember Councilor Dwight was, was president, and I was vice president, and we just, for some reason, realized, well, oh, we have to do this. And we did, I think, just in time or something, or maybe uh, even just yeah. a little bit past. So I don't think there is, except for your Google calendar, you know, where you can set a reminder for three years from now, uh, I don't think there really is any mechanism beyond 
I guess the next council president will have to review, you know, the, the landscape generally and, and make sure to to remind the next council president to start. We, that we would note in the desk drawer. That, okay, <laughs> carve it in. Yeah. We, could, we could ask Google to remind us. I'm sure. <laughs> the, but, Google yeah. will remind us because they're observing us at all times. If, 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 if if say, yeah, Alexa, remind us in three. <laughs> <laughs> Google, wake me up. Yeah, bring that face. <laughs> okay. Uh, ask, let's just say ask and answer. Don't, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't anger our robotic overlord. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So any other Is discussion? anyone here committed to being here in three years? Raise no. your hand. <laughs> Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> That's what they all say. All right. Any other discussion? Uh, let's have a roll call. And we will start with Councillor Klein. Yes. Councillor Klein, yes. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor uh, Labarge, yes. Councillor Murphy. Yes. Councillor Nash. Yes. Councillor O'Donnell, yes. Councillor Shera. Councilor Shera, yes. Councilor Bidwell? Yes. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Carney. Yes. Councilor Dwight. Yes. Okay, that is approved unanimously on second reading. Sent to the mayor for his consideration. 